Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to another episode of In Conversation with AT. If I really need to create a jingle for that, you know, it's just kind of boring just me saying that and stuff. Today, <laughs> we're at the Warner Lot. As you can see, there's the water tower. Um, can you guess why? Well, the reason why is we're talking to the voice director for the reboot of Animaniacs. Well, not just for Animaniacs, actually. She's also voice directed the new Disney Junior series Eureka. She's also voice directed the new Cuphead show for Netflix. Um, My Dad, the Bounty Hunter. I'm not sure what, what network does that air on? That's going to be coming out on Netflix soon. Netflix, another Netflix show as well. And she's also an Emmy winning voice actor and the emmy award winning voice actor and well deserved as well she recently won an emmy for outstanding voice directing for a daytime animated series beating the likes of sirena C- C- irwin sirena excuse me if i didn't pronounce her name right and tom kenny the- tom kenny wow i have no words this woman is remarkable my guest is sarah jane sherman or is it sarah Either one, whatever you, whatever works for you. With your accent, it sounds beautiful. So I'll take either one, Sarah or Sarah. How, what are the two differences? How did you say it? Sarah. I say Sarah, but whatever. Sa- oh, Sarah. 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 Okay. Sarah. This is my guest my is accent. Sarah Jane <laughs> Sherman. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. You're welcome. It's so great. I mean, you you recently won an Emmy. I was like, I kept looking at the nominations. I was like, oh, hang on. She's no, she's nominated for Animaniacs. And I remember just staying up until like two o'clock in the morning and just looking and just thinking, oh, where's it going to think? And then it came out. The winner of the most the outstanding voice directing is Sarah J. She was like, oh my gosh. She <laughs> deserves it for working with legends such as Tres McNeil, Frank Welker, Corey Burton, Wow, I, I list so many good people in the new Animaniacs reboot. I mean, to be fair, I've only watched the first two episodes. Um, I haven't really had the time. But there is a second season coming out in November, and there's been a third season yeah. confirmed. So this is going really well. Sarah, how are you? Sorry, enough of me blabbering on and on. No, no, no. I love hearing you talk about it. It's getting me excited. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. It's currently about 9 p.m. in the UK, actually. Geez, we're right in the heart of the heat, mid, uh, you know, mid-August, we got some 84 degrees Fahrenheit here, it's pretty hot. Ooh, we had a heat wave not long <laughs> ago over here, it was very, very bad. Um, I had to stay downstairs for at least a week because my room is technically the hottest in the house when the sun's up. It's because the, the heat reflects onto here and then it stays over the whole day and I'm just sweltering, so I literally had to spend most of my days in the lounge not upstairs in my bedroom editing and it was hard because i was running behind on working on my videos and stuff like that yeah it was i bet oh yeah definitely um how did you get into voice directing may i ask oh well i don't know i kind of fell into it um a little bit by accident so i worked at disney television animation for about 12 years, uh, doing shows like Phineas and Ferb, Gravity Falls, Wander Over Yonder, oh, Star vs. Yes. The Forces of Evil, Big Hero 6 series, Tangled the series, a bunch of shows doing uh, casting. Oh, and, yeah, you um, were the casting director. Oh, my gosh, I am so sorry. I remember looking at your IMDb, but no, no. I was like, uh, oh, my going towards voice actor, I don't know. But, yes, she no, was no. also cast directed a lot of Disney shows as well. No, no, so I did all the casting, and that was kind of been, been what I trained at and kind of rose through the ranks at Disney doing. And... Um, then I left there for a job to work with John Stewart, um, comedian John Stewart as his head of casting. And then uh, he ended up stopping that, or that project ended up stopping, you know, pretty sh- soon into that run. And I found myself in the freelance world. And um, a lot of places have in house casting directors. So there wasn't much of a need for freelance casting. I did find some places like at Warner Brothers and at Cartoon Network at the time and Netflix. They didn't have in house casting when I first started. Um, and uh, You know, so I kind of had to expand what I was doing. And at the time, I'd only voice directed a little bit like auditions here and there um, during the casting process. And, oh, somebody, you know, was absent one day or couldn't come into the office. So I'd step in and maybe substitute voice direct or direct ADR, um, some of the smaller stuff. And then I just started, uh, you know, I'd go out in these interviews and I started booking the jobs. And I was like, oh, my gosh. okay. And, you know, it's um, so much more mentally taxing for me because. Uh, you know, casting I've been doing forever. I, don't, I mean, I think, but I don't have, it's a lot easier and I can just kind of, you know, cast roles pretty quickly. But voice directing is just like such a, you know, new beast in theory. 
uh, for me, but um, yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. It just kind of fell into it, I guess, but I've been doing it for, you know, several years now and, you know, looks like it's looks like it's gonna stick for a little bit oh yeah definitely considering season three <laughs> of anime next has just been announced you're gonna be busy for the next mm, two three years <laughs> let's just get you all booked yeah, up just managed to just fingers squeeze crossed. it in <laughs> yeah fingers crossed definitely wow so how did you get involved with the anime next reboot did they come to you or did you kind of come go to them well, at the time, like I mentioned, um, Warner Brothers didn't have an in-house casting director, and, and now they do. Uh, and so I went to them, and I ended up booking Looney Tunes cartoons for them. It was this uh, reboot for HBO Max they were doing, or a new version of Looney Tunes. And I booked that, and they were happy with my work, and they said, do you want to come in and meet on Animaniacs and do an interview for it? And so I went in for the casting director position, and they said, do you voice direct? And I said, yes. And then I got the call that I got the job. Um, but when they offered it to me, they offered me the casting and voice directing. And I was like, oh, what? I thought I was just doing the casting and the executive producer was going to do the voice directing. They said, no, they want you to do that. And I was like, oh, OK. And, you know, my heart started to beat out my chest. And because like you had mentioned, it's the idea of working with that caliber of talent, um, but also coming into a show on characters that they've been doing for 20 years. You know, it's like, yes, the, the, you know, the first run ended, but they kept doing live shows and have kept performing for audiences and kind of kept these characters alive in various ways. And, you know, I'd be coming in like, hi, I'm gonna be the new voice director. You know, like, I'm not gonna tell, you know, any of these people how to do their characters. They know these characters better than anyone. Um, so just kind of finding what my role as a voice director is for them, you know, and kind of how I can help and how I can serve the show um, and honoring the talent and their performances. Yeah, I mean, uh, the original voice director was Andrea Romano um, for the, yes. the 1993 series. Have you ever met her or talked to her? I have, I have. I've met her a couple of times and I'm sure she'd be on this show if she hadn't retired. Uh, oh, I, I have reached out fame. to her. I've reached out to her. Yeah. We're working on that. And definitely. she is, yeah, she is fantastic. But, um, you know, I was like, she, she would be yeah, working on Animaniacs and stuff too, I imagine, the reboot, had she not retired. And, um, you know, and she's very lovely. She's, you know, she's uh, the best, you know, the best of the best. And, um, you know, I kind of had to decide early on, I wasn't trying to be her and I would never be her in a million years. So it's kind of finding my own style for the show and, like I said, what I bring to it. Um, she's so she's so amazing. Yeah, I, I agree, definitely. Wow, she's voice yeah. acted a lot of good shows as well. And you have as yes, well. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I was gonna say, I first <laughs> I first came across you when obviously I looked in the credits for Animaniacs. I was like, Sarah Jane Sherman. So I looked you up, I was like, wow, look at all these credits. And then a few months later, Emmy Award winning voice director shot Sarah Jane Sherman. Apologies if I keep That's saying Sarah, was... by the way. No, no, please. I love it. Accent sounds perfect. Um, but it, it was kind of a, it was a very strange way to find out because that, um, so I knew that the show would be that evening for us. And um, so I was prepared to kind of start to start to get in that mindset later that evening, you know, around 5 p.m. And I got a text from my friend saying, you won. And I said, what, what do you mean? And she's like, they just announced it on Twitter. And I was like, at two o'clock, you know, or like they just had put it on Twitter and I had no idea. And because they don't say my name, you know, it's like they just say Animaniacs or whatever. It's like they kept, you know, the voice director of Animaniacs and a lot of it wasn't my name connected. I had no idea. So I was, you know, shocked, you know, picture just like in my shorts. I'm like, I just want a many. And I'm like in shorts and a T-shirt, kind of the opposite of what you would think of like being in a fancy ball gown, being presented the Emmy by um, Brad Pitt, you know, or whatever the case is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but just like shorts and a t-shirt <laughs> I was going to say that's very odd that they didn't mention your name I mean Mark Hamill won the outstanding voice acting for a preschool show I think it was for Alina of Avador yeah um, Alina of Avador yeah that's literally just like saying oh yeah outstanding voice directing Alina of Avador I'm like well who, who did the voice who did the voice acting we, <laughs> who, who do we congratulate yeah. at this in this situation <laughs> oh. yeah so it was it was interesting because that's even when the nominations came out um, I knew that Animaniacs had put me up for it and I was very grateful. And then when the nominations came out, I did a quick search of my name and it came up nothing. And so I was pretty bummed and I was like, oh, I didn't get anything. And it's because they didn't, you know, they didn't mention my name. So 
<laughs> I didn't find that out till later too, so I was a little behind the curve. <laughs> well, if it makes you feel any better, the Wikipedia page says your name. It just says Animaniacs, oh, Sarah, and Sarah Jane Sherman. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think I'll just switch to Sarah because, like, because every time if it, if there's a H on the end, I say Sarah. But if it's S A R A, I say Sarah. I don't know why. That's totally fine. No, that works for me. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was gonna say I always have to try and get every name pronunciation right because I don't like offending anyone because I like yeah. them what they prefer. If you get what I mean. Yeah, I have no preference. You could even say S J, whatever you want. You could just say Sherman, whatever feels good. <laughs> Okay, Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Peabody and Sherman. Yeah, actually, I was yeah. actually going to ask you. Um, what cartoons did you grow up with? That's a good question. So, I mean, I've always been a fan of Mickey Mouse, but I, um, at the time, like, I actually discovered cartoons probably later in life of things. Like, I mean, yes, like I watched Snoopy's and things like that growing up, which I was always a fan of, but I kind of found animation later in life because it just wasn't something that was, I was exposed to, I think. I mean, there, there might've been Saturday morning cartoons, but I like to sleep in. So I was never up early, like trying to do that. Um, and so I found a love and appreciation. I mean, I guess, I'm sorry, let me, let me correct that. I've always loved the Disney movies too you know, of watching like, you know, at the time it was the, you know, the Lion King and uh, Little Mermaid and um, Beauty and the Beast, like all those kind of big marquee ones. And that's, that was kind of my only introduction. I didn't know the series as well. Um, but now uh, having worked at Disney for so long, kind of getting the appreciation for how long it takes and all the great writing and what goes in there, I just exposed to so much more. And then having a young daughter and then watching it through her eyes, it's a whole other experience for me. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of turned me onto it. So I, I'm a late bloomer in that sense. Um, also getting to know all the different styles of all the different um, creators and animators and kind of learning that and learning the difference between the different genres, um, you know, not clumping all of the animation together, but just kind of seeing the wide range that's out there um, has really kind of piqued my interest and um, got me excited about animation um, later in life. Have you shown any of your shows that you voice directed to your daughter at all, or your son as well? Because you have two children. Yeah. Um, so Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, I, I did casting on, so not voice directing. So they got to see that, and that was kind of the first. I grew up with that show. They I had. watched it as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I worked on that show for a little bit. Um, some of the greats there, and then um, yeah, Trust was on that show. Uh, yeah, she was Daisy Duck. on that as well. Yeah, and. Um, then my daughter has now kind of found Star vs. the Forces of Evil. She's seen a little of Animaniacs, but it's a little, a little old for her. But I've let her see a little bit, see a little bit. She loves the opening theme song. She likes to sing that. Um, she fights with me with thinking that Dot's name should be Pinky because she wears a pink skirt. And we have fights about that. Uh, <laughs> like that. But um, yeah, so kind of watching it. So yeah, they started to see stuff that I've, I've worked on. Um, uh, Eureka hasn't come out yet, but I think that'll be a big one when that does come out, because uh, that'll be in the right age group for her as well, yeah. um, since she's kind of in the junior preschool level of yeah. uh, cartoon watching. Yeah, I mean, Disney's yeah. Eureka, obviously, it's coming out on Disney Junior. Um, yeah, yeah, there is a stellar cast on that as well. I believe Fred Tattershaw's part of the cast. Yes, Have yes, you done the just voice with him this week. Yet? Really? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, so we've done most of the first season. Um, so that's been exciting and kind of working with all sorts of really talented um, performers on that show. Um, you know, what I think is great is I've also gotten to work with a lot of great kid actors, or child actors as well, um, who are getting started in the voiceover world. That's been pretty cool, as well as, you know, some of the giants of animation too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm personally sad because Fred was actually meant to come to a Comic Con in England that I was going to in November, but it was announced this week that he cancelled his appearance. So, oh, yeah, got it. He's an actor I really. Well, hopefully to you get to meet him soon. He's a very, very nice man. I've You're been meaning to talented. get him on this show, but I've been unsuccessful. Maybe one day, I guess. Only one yeah, can dream. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um he's been on animaniacs several times too oh yeah he has i think who else has yeah. been as well john bailey's been on it uh kevin michael yeah. richardson uh who else is yeah that? all um, those people yeah 
Oh, that was it. That was an AM. It's fun because I'm trying to think. I have to think of what's been announced. I, I'm getting mixed up between all the seasons, so I don't want to give any <laughs> give anything away. <laughs> Yeah, oh, there's, a, there's an actress who was on it. I can't wait. Jamila Jamil, she was in it as well, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah she was in a Pinky in the Brain segment. Yeah, she's wonderful. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, can I ask, what it, what was it like working on the Animaniacs reboot with like, all these people? Because it was a variety of guest stars and then you got the regulars. Like, What were they like, both on and off the microphone? What were the actors like? Yeah, were they, were they nice? Were they supportive? Yeah. Yes, I mean, the thing is, and I will say this after almost every guest star, every you know new person kind of records, they come in and after they perform, they say, thank you, this has been a dream. I grew up watching Animaniacs or, you know, this is, you know, the dream come true or, you know, things like that. Um, it's always cool to hear, you know, help someone kind of relive their childhood or kind of, you know, do something from, from their youth where it makes it feel even more special yeah. um, to them. That's really great. Um, and yeah, I mean, everyone is a real pleasure. I mean, it's very funny because when we're casting, um, one thing the, the producers and I all agree to is we don't like to work with people that are mean. So everyone we've cast on the show was all very nice and everyone was super sweet and, um, you know, just a pleasure to work with. Yeah. Um, I'd like to yeah. speak with you after this interview about some of the cast members on the show and my personal experiences. You at home will get to see it, but maybe I might spill the beans in a future video. Mm, who knows? Yeah, that would just go for the legal <laughs> stuff afterwards and stuff like that, but it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sweet. Um, what was it like working with... Okay, guilty pleasure. I always have to ask this. What was it like working with Frank Welker? Um, he was great, you know. He... Um, like, I think I was talking to you earlier about it, but, you know, he's, he can do so much and I've gotten to work with him on several projects now and he just is the nicest really? man, you know, comes so in. So not just Animaniacs. You know, yeah, I worked with him on a couple different projects, um, various things uh, as well, like got to see, got to hear his uh, Fred and Scooby voice. Oh, wow. Um, and stuff too. So that's, so you, you know, So you've done some right Scooby-Doo in. stuff as well? I, I've possibly, maybe have started to do some, maybe something. Um, NDA. Neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> but, you know, Sorry. he, um, it's like, he's such a professional and just, I mean, he's so unassuming, you know, you would have no idea what, he has some, like, like Fred, for example, on Scooby-Doo, he, he, that's like the law, he's the, what is it? The actor doing kind of the law, uh, the, doing the character for the longest period. Like, they oh, started yeah, like the yeah. 50s or the 1969. Or something, like, crazy like that. Yeah, something like that. And he's been doing that character the whole entire time, which I think is the record for any actor playing that's a character dedication. consecutively on television. Like that's a uh, dedication, but it's like remarkable. You know, people age out of roles or they recast or whatever. I mean, he's been doing that. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Exactly, um, yeah. But, you know, he comes in, he can do so many different voices and it, like he's so funny and does, you know, all these great takes and everything. So just everything you'd expect it to be working with a genius like Frank. Oh yeah, definitely. I've met him in I met him just before the pandemic in Liverpool. He was so so sweet. And I'm meeting him again this October in Edinburgh, which I'm counting down the days at this point. It's like eighty something days until I see him again. Aww. So excited. I'm working on oh, a little wow, canvas. That's so great. I'm working on a little canvas. It's just over there, it's just unfinished, but it's like a canvas, it's like a little drawing I'm doing. It's a sketch of him with all his characters around it. I'll post it on social media oh, when it's that. done. So um hopefully you'll get to see it whenever yeah i get around to finishing it which will probably be around next month-ish because obviously i've got to draw the characters and then you know color it all and paint and stuff like that so yeah that's awesome yeah it definitely is it's fun as well it's basically like therapy art is to me yeah yeah i, I agree definitely um what was it like working with corey burton because i believe corey did a few guest spots on animaniacs yeah. Um, I mean, Corey is, again, a, a true genius and, you know, what he can do um, with how many, how his vocal separation just between his characters. And, you know, I, I was mentioning that he, you know, was cast as an announcer. And when he came in to read, he said, great, you know, here are 15 types of announcer. What kind of announcer were you thinking of? And they all sounded cool, so right? different and, um, you know, completely separate people. You'd had no idea, you know, it was just one person doing it. So, you know, that's, he's incredibly remarkable and we were lucky to have him on that show. 
um, as well, and kind of doing some guest spots. And, you know, he's such good friends with all of the rest of our main cast that it really just blended and, you know, jo- rejoined the family, if you will. Yeah, and usually me would say, oh yeah, he's quite private, I haven't had the chance to reach him, but something happened last year which I never thought would happen. I was making a documentary on, you know who Bill Scott is, the voice of Bullwinkle and Rocky and Bullwinkle, right? Got it, yeah. I did a documentary on him, and I approached Corey's agents asking would it be possible to talk to Corey about Bill Scott for this project, and... Everyone was, Everyone had already told me, and he probably won't accept, he's very private, he doesn't do interviews or stuff like that anymore. I'm like, eh, well, it's worth a shot. A few days later, I got an email back, Corey would love to do an interview with you. I was like, oh my gosh! And at the time, he was like, my most number one favourite voice actor. And I yeah. was I was in quarantine, and I was just screaming the house down. I was oh, so happy. And that day came. Um, I got on call. Um, with him. I told him how much I loved him and his voices. Uh, I talked to him about Bill. Um, it was really only meant to be about an hour. We went on for six hours up until four o'clock in the morning my time. So oh. that was... And I asked him why did he why did he accept because he doesn't usually do interviews and he said because I'm autistic just like he is. Because oh, he has Asperger's. Just that's like great. Me, so. <laughs> Oh, it just makes it great, you know, and that's why he gets into it. You know, this kind of thing is to meet and interact, you know, to make fans happy and stuff like that, too. Why he does these characters and stuff. And I'm so happy you guys connected. That makes me so happy as well. And if anyone asks me, what was your if you got a good memory of the first lockdown? Usually I would say, "Mm, nah, it was really just stayed in me. Well, I got to speak to my favourite voice actor on Skype for six hours, so that was cool. With Frank, I've had similar experiences. I've had video chats with him, one-on-one, GalaxyCon, um, and um, he has a little message board on his website that I've posted a few messages on, and he's responded to them, so yeah, I think we're kind of hitting it off. Yeah, definitely. Aww. It's fun though. Definitely. That's incredible, Amber. That's awesome. I know. Yeah, it just feels. It just makes me feel happy because I feel like I'm finally one of these people. Well, technically I am because I'm a voice actress myself. I've only had one job. Um, obviously you can't really. I'd say obviously there's a photo here, but um, it's on my. It's it's on my wardrobe, but I have a copy of it on my phone. I did a voice acting job for a coin-operated children's helicopter ride last year just before the pandemic hit and it was just amazing so there i am congratulations ride. thank you oh i love oh, it you can't really Excellent. see it okay yeah there you go i can see it there so i i did that voice and um company went bankrupt so only about two models are made one's in bradford one's in the country iceland so i guess i'm ten worldwide i guess not as big as international you, international voice international, actress superstar. yeah i'm not as, i'm not as big as you though i haven't won an emmy for it <laughs> <laughs> well like i said until it gets delivered to my door i'm not gonna believe it until oh, it's yeah. in my hands <laughs> you don't have it oh yeah that's a shit how how oh oh yeah because it was remotely wasn't it <laughs> i keep forgetting they have to engrave it yeah they have to engrave it for you oh, and all yeah. this and I, all out together. I thought it was already engraved or do they just I was I was gonna say like don't they engrave it, like the day before, and then they just announce it or I I didn't know that I didn't no, know they engraved it. Until I think afterwards. they're all yeah they don't have it and then they announce who it is and they have kind of the same one whatever they're using and then they engrave it. And so it's it. personalized. <laughs> yeah, one in a million. <laughs> wow, <laughs> like I'm I'm just so happy for you. If you you've literally accomplished so much. Sarah. Oh, well, thank I'm you. Thank so you. Proud. You're making making me blush. Thank Aww. you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so, the Cuphead show, um, based off a video game, yeah. I have it on the Xbox. I've played a little bit of it, and for what I can tell, it's actually really good. Um, so, what's it been like working you beat on the it? Cuphead? Not yet, not yet. <laughs> no, it's a hard game. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love the art style of it, just so 30s. It reminds me of the old yeah. Warner Brothers. Yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah Fleischer. Charles Fleischer. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what's it been like working on that show then? It's been great. I mean, similar to Animaniacs, I've kind of found myself in shows where fans really have an invested interest in, you know, these characters and these voices. You know, it's like Animaniacs, like, they, you know, making sure that the main cast returned, which they did. And then Cuphead, it's like, these are these beloved characters that people have been playing the games 
really care about. And, um, you know, everyone has a vested interest of who's going to be what character. And so watching kind of the announcements come out and then checking out the fans reactions. Um, but it's been really cool. The, um, the creatives on the show, our producers are um, really fantastic. And I, you know, I've worked with one of them at Disney before, and then the other one was new and um, to me, and we just had a kind of a real great relationship trying to keep the records fun and light. Um, we actually record our actors all separate for that show. It's been pretty interesting. Um, Animaniacs, we do a lot of ensemble records. We're recording the talent together where we could, um, except for the pandemic where we couldn't get anyone together, but recording the talent together. Um, but the Cuphead show, we recorded everyone separate. So it was very interesting that like our mug man hadn't met our Cuphead for like a very long time, you know, in the series and things like that while they're brothers and they're playing off each other. It's funny. Yeah. Um, actually, I'd like to ask you, um, yeah, would you rather, ha have you had a go at voice acting before? No, this kind of, you know, <laughs> I, I know a few voice actors no. who are voice directors, there's Susan Blue, there's yeah. Charlie Adler, there's Jeannie McSwain, yeah. So yeah, I was, I was, I was simply just, Sam curious. Regal, yeah, oh yeah, 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 um, I think, I mean, it's interesting because I've come in through voice directing through a casting background and they came into it through an acting background. Um, so it's kind of just different avenues to get in there. Um, but yeah, obviously it'd been great, you know, if I also been, been an actor, I think I just kind of bring a different side or different perspective to voice, uh, voice directing. Um, but no, you don't want me voice acting. <laughs> you don't want to hear it. Oh, maybe you could give it a try. I mean, Andrea Romano had a few cameos on Animaniacs, I think as herself, I think, yeah. Yeah, maybe. I think so. I think she did have a few. Um, yeah. Well, right now, I, I also do some coaching. And so right now, like I told you, I think I'm coaching my daughter and teaching her teaching her the voice acting craft. So maybe I'll push it on through my, my children and let them do it. I was going to say, there are a few voice actors out there who have children coming into the business. I mean, Carla Salas Rocky's daughter, Riley, she's in the new Star Trek Prodigy series. So perhaps yeah. maybe we could see... A little Charlie Sherman on our screens in the future. <laughs> Don't know. Hopefully, we'll see. Yeah. She's interested in it. She Aww. likes to to act for me. Very dramatic. <laughs> well, she's in the right hands, especially if she comes from a family <laughs> family with a mom for a voice. Well, I coach. tease her because she, you know, she, you know, got to do a couple auditions, and she's like, "That's not what I think we should do." And I was like, "Okay." I mean, I was like, she "This was is born my job, into the right family." But, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's funny. That's so sweet, though. In all seriousness, it's nice, nice that you're getting your daughter into the business. It's like passing down the family torch. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are, what are her favorite shows at the moment? Oof. Um, so, you know, you actually mentioned Elena of Avalor. Uh, we talked about that, but uh, uh, Carlos is, Ellis Rocky's on, and Mark Hamill. Yeah, she does is. love that yeah. show. Um, and uh, she just watched Troll Hunters. She liked that a lot. It's a little little scary for her, but she but she was really into that. Um, and she likes uh, so there's a live action show called Descendants, um, oh, and so they just had a little animated special that she likes, and she watches that on repeat a couple times. Oh. Um, but yeah, she's uh, she grew up kind of when I when she was first born, I was working at Disney, so she watched a lot of the Disney shows. Um, but now she's graduated to a few other few other series as well. So. Um, yeah, she's a, she's a fan of Netflix. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. Yeah, we, we've only had Netflix for about five years, and to be fair, I only really watch it. I don't watch any Netflix original series. I really just watch movies or runs of shows that used to be on TV but aren't anymore because TV yeah. like it isn't that good anymore. I literally don't watch TV. I mean, there's no shows on that I like anymore, to be fair. Just, yeah. ooh, all the good shows are yeah. online. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's interesting. I, yeah, I like I go through all my streaming platforms too. It's like hard to find a show sometimes because it doesn't like I record anything like Mondays or Tuesdays, you know, those kind of things. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, could you tell me a little more about My Dad the Bounty Hunter? So what what's this show all about, and wh wh what cast has it got, and who have you worked with? Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, so it uh, it, it's a great show. We, um, it's coming out on Netflix uh, sometime soon. I don't know the exact release date yet, but it is about a um, kids who find out that their dad is not a truck driver as they suspected, but he is an intergalactic bounty hunter. Oh. Um, and they find this out by kind of stowing away on his, um, what they think is his car and then end up kind of going on wacky, crazy adventures with him. 
And um, yeah, it's really just like a fun cast. Um, we've got, uh, I'm trying to think, so Priya Ferguson from Stranger Things, uh, Jacoby Swain, um, and we have like Yvonne Orgies in it um, wow. from, uh, yeah, from Insecure and um, just a lot of great talent on that show. I'm trying to think of who's been announced that I can actually <laughs> say, so I'm kind of going through in my head, but um, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful show. And it really feels to me like I'm watching a live action show. Like it has kind of some live action elements and stuff. I mean, it's, it's very, it's, it's very different from, um, you know, Animaniacs, which is kind of wacky and kind of like zany, if you will, yeah. zany to the max. But um, you've got like My Dad's Bounty Hunter, which feels a little bit more uh, grounded and authentic and kind of like, oh yeah, this could actually happen to a kid, you know, and kind of living through a kid's fantasy of if their dad, um, they got to go in space with their father. Wow, I see. Um, Yvette Nicole Brown is in it as well. And it says yeah. on IMDb. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So it was technically working with celebrities. Actually, who do you prefer working with? Do you prefer working with celebrities or actual voice actors? Well, I mean, there can be crossover. You know, between both those, you know, voice actors can be also celebrities and and stuff, and also celebrities can be very talented voice actors as well. Um, you know, I've gotten to work with all different types of people and kids included. Um, I think people that are just dedicated to their craft and excited to play in the booth are what I'm drawn to. So it's not necessarily a type of performer, but just kind of who's excited to do the role and play around and try something new and try this joke and play around with that, that I, you know, tend to have the most fun with. Yeah. Um, what's been your favorite project to work on out of all the shows you have voice directed or cast or uh, the you can't, cast people. I can't choose between my kids you can't make me say that <laughs> especially on something that's being recorded <laughs> um you know I I always say you know Phineas and Ferb had a has a strong place in my heart because it was the first show that I started kind of casting and Ferb. so much. yeah that I that I cast kind of from you know very day one I was there in that project and worked on it for so many years um, and have a strong relationship with the creators of that show and have kind of gone on to work with them at, you know, a couple of their other shows like Milo Murphy's Law and then uh, their next shows. And uh, so I think, so I'll say it's not my, it, it's, I have no favorites, but Phineas and Fur holds a dear place in my heart. I used to be obsessed with Phineas and Is that a Fur. fair answer? That's, that's definitely fair. <laughs> Eight-year-old me would definitely agree. Actually, I'd like to ask you a few questions regarding, like, sure. do you have someone people might Dan Povenmire? Um, uh, what was the first one? Oh, yes, because you were the casting director. You essentially pretty much chose, like, the guest stars and stuff like that. Um, I believe one episode, they have the presenters of Top Gear doing the commentary of a racing thing yes. at the start. Did you cast them? Yeah. Yes, well, um, at the time, um, Swampy Marsh had a connection there. He hadn't gone because he lived in um, England for a long time. And so we had a lot of we had a lot of British actors on the show throughout. A lot of people record from England. Most, oh, yeah. in, you know, first and foremost, our Ferb, Thomas Sangster, and then Richard O'Brien, who then. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Totally. Best, best film. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it was my job to kind of put out all the offers. So, you know, Swampy says that he's interested in hiring this person. Um, then I go out and kind of check with the agents and see if they're interested in doing the doing the show and familiarize them with it and making the offer and then scheduling it and getting them in. Wow! Wow! I mean, that, yeah, love that Top Gear cameo. It was just so good. <laughs> I mean, who else? I can't remember any a lot of other guest stars because I haven't seen the show in ages. But man, you got some good people for that show. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of people on that show, especially as it gained popularity and more people were interested in joining. You know. Yeah, you weren't going to them. They were coming to you. <laughs> they <laughs> well, were like, you know, funny story. Let me be we on had a, show. Well, it's true because we, you know, without naming names, we were recording at um, our record studio, and uh, a A-list actor kind of came up and said, "Are you guys doing Phineas and Ferb?" He's like, "My kids love that show. I'd love to be on that show." And I was like, "Done." You know, we sent an email out and oh, got that person wow. on the show right away. But can you, you say know, was, who that was? People or were. Can you not? No. <laughs> oh, I'll have, to, I'll have to guess. I'll have to guess. Oh my! Actually, that reminds me. There was a competition yeah. on the Disney Channel or XD website when I was about eight. It was like have your voice on Phineas and Ferb, and it was that you were voicing this background character who only had like one line, and you just sent it yeah. in, and um, whoever whoever got it, well. 
you know, got to be in the episode. I can't remember who won it. Well, I didn't even know who won it because I didn't really look at the credits, but I entered, but eight-year-old me had a squeaky voice, a squeaky high-faced British voice, and I don't think that one either would have done. So, I guess... That's funny. Well, I think of all shows, I think, you know, it's Phineas and Ferb, had, like I said, had a lot of British talent on that show. Um, but yeah, that kind of sounds a little bit familiar. I think I remember doing that at the time, but yeah, yeah. it was for like, an, a lot of, yeah. like an, like an ice cream truck driver. I think it was like a female ice cream truck driver. That's all maybe I for a kid or maybe be a, well, maybe, I don't for, know. For the woman who's serving the ice creams, the ice cream. Oh, got it. Got it. Yeah. I'll have to do oh, some yeah. digging. I'll, if I like find anything, I'll definitely let you know. Thank you. That sounds good. Yeah, it definitely does. You worked on Milo Murphy's Law as well, right? Yeah, I did that before I left Disney, um, kind of the initial casting and on a couple of the episodes there. Kind of, you know, we got to bring back some of the Phineas and Ferb cast, kind uh -huh. of crossed over onto there as well. Okay. Um, like Vincent and Allison had some parts in there. So, yeah. yeah. What was it like working with the Weird Al Yankovic on Milo Murphy's <laughs> Law? I love Weird Al. I'm such a huge fan of his. I actually interviewed him for my documentary and it was the best 15 minutes of my life. Oh, that's great. No, he's great. He's um he was awesome and um, you know, playing around and trying all sorts of things and you know, obviously as you would again expect, just a really funny <laughs> guy with a lot to add to the character. So that was it was a, that was very special as well. Yeah. Um, I think as soon as Dan and Swampy heard him, they were like, yes, we've got to get Weird Al as our lead. So it's very funny. <laughs> he hasn't been to the UK in about six years. I really want him to come back because oh, wow. I want to go see him live. I've never seen him perform before, only on like YouTube videos. And oh, stuff wow. Like wow. Uh, I am in awe. You've worked with so many good people. <laughs> Oh, it's just like so hard to take Well, if you've in. been in the business long enough, you've been in the business long enough, you work with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you been to England before, actually? Yeah, I have. Um, oh, I've done wow. some stuff with um, the voiceover network there. Um, they have in, in, in uh, I guess we were saying Camden. Is that, no, it's, maybe that's not right. But like, it, yeah. Um, in London. In that area. Yeah, in London. And um we, we did so I did a conference there above and beyond oh, um wow. but yeah then I've also been to visit as well yeah cool well next time you're over I'll yeah. have to come and see you I always say that to every single guest and now I'm promising about 70 people that I'll come and see you the next time they're over here so I've got to get a lot you of you can have a busy 2022 when things oh, yeah. open up I have to order a massive luncheon at some fancy Mayfair restaurant <laughs> 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 what, am, what am I doing actually? I haven't been to London since last year when the helicopter ride was introduced. That was quite fun, really. Last big trip before the pandemic. I'm very sad. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. My cheeks hurt from smiling. Oh, me too. <laughs> People me too. say I always got like big dimples and stuff, and I'm like, oh, sometimes they're just really bad. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> it's just, I usually have to stress my face. I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. So. What are they like? The Animaniacs. Off camera. Trez. Jess. Ress. I mean, Rob. <laughs> no, they're great. And they're, like I said, they're really good friends um, as well. And they like to record as an ensemble together. So it's really great when we kind of get all three of them or um, Rob and Maurice together as Pinky and the Brain and um, get to see the magic. I mean, it's very funny, you know, I, it's like you just kind of start them and they just can kind of go through the whole script perfectly, you know, in one take and just really knock it out of the park. And, you know, they know exactly what each other is going to do in the record. So sometimes we have times, you know, when the Warners say things together like, oh, or whatever the case is, and they know exactly the right rhythm that they all would do it together the same length of laugh because they've been recording together for so many years. Um, but they love the show and they love doing those characters and the characters are part of them and they're part of the characters. And it's, um, it's really, it's magic to watch, you know, yeah. it's exciting. I, you know, hopefully we, if everyone could get to watch a table read at some point, I think you would get to see, but it's, it's really amazing. Panel with all of them reading an Animaniac script with Jess, Tress, Rob, Frank, Maurice. Yeah. That would be so yeah. nice. Um, yeah. People say it was down to Steven Spielberg that, um, well, it was his choice that they got the original actors back. So, were you in it? Did you help with any of that, or had Steven already called them back? 
Yeah, I think um, that call was already made by the time I get brought onto the project. They said, uh, you know, would you like to join Animaniacs with our original cast? And I said, absolutely. You know, it was a real a no brainer for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was, um, yeah, they were already signed on. So I'm not exactly sure how that all worked out, but um, I'm, glad, it I'm did. glad that it happened the way yeah. that it did. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I hope we get it over here properly in the UK because it's on Hulu. We don't have Hulu over here, so... I've had really no way to watch it then, otherwise to find a website online that has the episodes. I guess it's the only way to do yeah. that, I guess. Yeah. Have yeah. you got any, um, just just um, final question, have you got any yeah. projects in the works that you can say about? Um, well, apart from the, the the shows I've said, Cuphead, Eureka and stuff, and the Bounty Hunt. Yeah, bounty yeah, I have all those kind of coming down the pike. Um, I, well, I mean, I've actually been very fortunate, a couple things at um, Cartoon Network, a couple shorts, and then some pilots at Nickelodeon and some stuff at Apple. So um, I've been very fortunate to work with all different studios. So hopefully I guess follow my social media for stuff that's coming out soon and I will do my best to <laughs> keep everyone updated oh, and everything. Yeah, but yeah, it's a lot, a lot of fun stuff on the way. Oh, well, I'm, I'm very looking forward to it, very much looking forward to it, definitely. Especially because when it's voice directed by you, because you do a terrific job. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. That's very sweet to say. You're welcome. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, SJ, Sherman, Sarah, it's been lovely talking to you. So, so lovely. Well, it's been so wonderful to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank You're you for welcome. spending your evening with me tonight. You're welcome. Where can we find you on social media? Do you have a website or anything like that? Well, I do have a website, which is uh, sarahjanesherman.com, but I'm pretty active on Twitter, which is the same handle, at Sarah Jane Sherman, where you can get some voiceover tips and things like that. And um, yeah, I think that's probably the best way. Yeah, I'll, I will put a link to those in the description, and I will definitely follow those tips, because as a young actress stepping into the business and studying a performing arts course at college, they are definitely going to help me, those tips. Oh yeah, definitely. I definitely, I salute you, Sarah. I definitely, I, I tip my hat off to you. Right back had, at you. <laughs> if I had one on right now. <laughs> so, to you guys at home, thank you so much for watching this episode of In Conversation with ATF. Thank you so much for listening to me and Sarah talk. It's been fun. It's been amazing speaking to a lady who has had the privilege of working with some of the best voice actors and actors in business. In show business, actually, should I say, definitely. So, without further ado, I will wrap this up here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you around. So it's goodbye from me, goodbye from Sarah, Sarah, Seth J. Sherman, whatever you want to call her, Sarah. And, yeah, have a nice day, keep safe, we'll get through this. Adios, goodbye, and cut. Mm -hmm.